Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're going to be talking about the spell Wall of Ice. All right, more walls. More walls with different areas. This is a... Different areas, well, kind of different effects. I mean, we did wall of thorns already. It was partial you know crowd control or battlefield control or whatever partial damage uh unlike wall of stone which is amazing um a wall of ice all right what what are, what are we doing here all right you get a solid wall of ice uh anywhere the neat thing about most of these walls they have a 120 foot range which is enormous um it's a nifty upside to all of them but this one's for the same boat um you make a dome or a sphere with a 10 foot radius that is a foot thick or a flat surface of up to 10 10 foot panels so it's almost like wall of stone but it doesn't have the flexibility of the diameter shifts to get more um it has the same caveat where everything's got to be connected though so if you make a giant surface they all have to be connected to some way or you got a sphere or a dome uh so you can make igloos and stuff with it uh, uh because yeah. igloos <laughs> these walls cause cause damage uh, only whenever they initially come or when you break them. So whenever you really? cast it, yes. Oh. Uh, it, it pushes creatures around. On a failed save, whenever it springs into existence, uh, they make a save or take 10 6 cold damage or half on a success. Um, if you are like, if you just go up and touch it, then it's just a wall. It's just a very cold oh. wall, but it's a All wall. Right. So it doesn't oh. deal damage uh, after that. it springs into existence, I believe. Um, unless you break it. And once you break a section that has an AC of 12 and 30 hit points, um, it creates a 5d6 cold area um that goes through the the frigid air that lasts for the duration so you can sort of as it breaks down it makes more cold damaging areas which gives you like a 15 d6 wall of cold kind of if people break through it um but walls also randomly vulnerable to fire damage which i kind of love uh, it just means fireball actually just decimates this thing like you put a wall down and they fireball it and it just is gone um but it still leaves the cold stuff behind uh it upcasts structure d6 damage it's a decent damage spell and it's predominantly what it is is a damage spell this is not a Game of Thrones, like, wall of the north. No, this is no. fragile. Yeah. Uh, a couple uh, of rounds of the Great Sword will break through this. All right. Um, all right, well, we, we've talked about Wall of Thorns. How do you feel this compares to that? I mean, Wall of Thorns has uh, the... I mean, this can be broken, whereas mm-hmm. Wall of Thorns cannot. So the neat thing is, this is like eerily similar to wall of thorns this is more damage front loaded than wall of thorns but it is uh less damage on the on the back end so like if if you cast this and things don't go through it and if you cast either of them this is slightly better if things do go through it they're about the same um and then it gets slightly worse the more times they go through it for this than the wall of thorns so if you can get things to go back and forth through them the wall of thorns is better granted this is way easier once a section gets broken it's super easy to push things in and out of this it's really because you can it's just space that's frigid air and you can do whatever you'd like with that frigid air granted this is a wizard spell so you're not going to like throw my people through it or whatever uh, but there are other you're, ways you're, to force i mean them. your friends might be able to oh for sure um so you can kind of get extra instances of that 5d6 damage after the initial cast so you can it sort of functions as this hybrid. The walls will eat some attacks and the whole thing is going to deal a lot of damage. And that puts it, I think, is honestly one of the better wall spells. It's just a weird one in that it all of the instances of damage kind of happen at odd times. Because again, it'll happen whenever you cast it, but then nothing else is taking damage if it runs into it until the wall sections break and then they take damage as they go through it. <laughs> um, which is a whole bunch of like, yeah, that's fine. That's pretty good. It's 60, if you ever get the full 15d6 damage out of this, it's great. This is better than upcast fireball. That's all you can really ask for if you're hitting enough things with it. It's a big area, so you're going to hit enough things with it. You can make it a sphere. You can make it a, a dome, so you can like hit functionally the same areas as fireball. And if you trap things inside of it and they break out, they're probably taking more damage, and you're getting exactly what you'd ask for out of it. All right, let me... I guess I, I didn't read the spell description clearly enough, but um, all right, now, as long as the wall is intact... You don't take damage. Correct. After the initial casting. Yes. But so what once, happens? Once it's cracked, once it's breached, is that like a permanent damage damage area, or does it only cause damage as you pass through it? Reducing a ten foot section of the wall to zero hit points leaves behind a sheet of frigid air in the space the wall occupied, um, and that deals the five d six damage in that area. Only in the breached space, not like Correct. five feet surrounding. All right, so yeah, you do need to pass through it. 
You still have to basically go through the area yeah. the wall was once in. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's helpful that the spell can do the 10 foot panels because that means you can make like, it, it helps better against things that are flying. It helps better, better than things that can climb. So you can cover the areas that I normally have pain points about walls with. Um, but it also can just be a sphere or a dome to do a bunch of damage. That's pretty handy. Um, and anytime things get broken and they, the things have to run through it and take damage, that's just there for however long the spell lasts. So if you if you set this up and you know a bunch of things are going to have to run through an area and they break through it, you just have the 5d6 area and there's no then way to mitigate it or remove it until the spell ends, which is fine. It's not probably as good as Wall of Thorns in that instance, but it's still, it's good in other instances that Wall of Thorns is worse in, and that makes it a marginally good spell. Yeah. All right. I can't, can't argue that. Um, man, we've been talking about walls. You got anything else to say about Wall of Ice? Uh, it's uh, the low HP, low AC makes it worse at the slowing people down, but it still is probably slows them down enough that it's fine. If this ever eats an attack or two in a section, you're pretty happy with that. Um, and it's often going to be enough time to like get your dashing going and get your yourself hidden or other things like that. Um, this well, is definitely one of the worst like blocking spells. Um, well, it's probably a good mix of of like control yeah. and damage. They're all some rate on that spectrum right, of right. damage to control. They all fit somewhere in there. This is definitely a higher on the damage end and lower on the control end. Yeah. And I, I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. You'll you'll find you, places to use the, the wall. Use the wall you need at the time you need it. Exactly. Bob, I expect fully to see you playing the full wall character, which is just the wizard that has every wall spell that they've ever dreamed of and does all of the walls all of the time. No, it's just wall of stone for me. Just wall of stone all the time. Yeah. My bad. Uh, Bob the builder. That that yeah, that's that's perfect. All right. Um, you, uh, now you were giving me crap about scoring it, so I'm gonna let you score this first, and I'll tell you what I. I'm giving it a a four out of five. This is a three out of five. I think. This All is right. just a good damage spell, and as far as good damage spells go, um, it's it's good in that instance. It's not a whole lot better than that. Plus, adequate. Um, yeah, battlefield control spell. Eh, mediocre battlefield control spell. Yeah. This isn't well, reshaping the game for anyone like Wallstone is. It's uh, it's on the spectrum. Yes. And that's good enough for me. Sure. All right. Well, that was Wall of Ice. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.